What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. Today I wanted to talk about 20 of my favorite songs of 2016. I could put another 20 on here. In fact, if this video does well and people want to see it, I might do another 20 because there were so many good songs. Basically, the way that I made this list was I thought to myself, what song stood out to me? What songs have I played over and over and over? What songs are always in rotation on my iPod? Just records that I have to go on Spotify, YouTube, and just check out from time to time. And so I picked just 20 at random. But the more I think about it, there's other ones on there that I could have put. But these are 20 that I played a lot in 2016. So, let's get into it. The first one on my list is Kalani's Gangsta. This one was on the Suicide Squad soundtrack, which was one of the best soundtracks of the year. I think if anybody needs a blueprint for how to do soundtracks in this day and age, look at Suicide Squad. Not saying that every movie needs to infuse hip-hop and R&B into their soundtrack, because not every movie calls for that. But this one, it just worked. And so Gangsta was a story about the Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship and it was written for other purposes. What's crazy about it is that this song was not made with the purpose of representing the Joker and Harley Quinn. I was reading that in an article on Genius earlier this year and this record just, I just love it. I listen to it over and over again. It has over like 60, 70 million views on YouTube. That is just unreal. She's about to have a huge 2017 when she drops her debut album. The next song on my list is Anderson Pax, The Season Slash Carry Me. It's hard to pick a favorite from Anderson Pack. There is just too many records on Malibu and No Worries that were uh, primed to be picked. So I went with The Season Slash Carry Me because that was the one that I really enjoyed more than anything else before the album came out. He put out three or four singles, and that was the one that I kept revisiting. Two different songs, and they couldn't be more sonically different, but they just fit together. I love when the Carry Me section starts, and he kind of runs down his family tree. And I just thought that was a cool way to, uh, you know, talk about your family. In a way, like, a lot of times artists don't need to talk about their families, but I think it helps if you do it in a way that makes sense. Some artists, it's like, you don't know anything about their parents unless you're like a diehard fan. But if you just listen to an Anderson Pack record, particularly Carry Me, you're going to hear a little bit about his upbringing and who was in his life and, you know, the, the, the hardships, the drugs, all the stuff that was around him when he was growing up. The next one on my list is Push the T featuring Jay-Z, Drug Dealers Anonymous. Jay-Z was supposed to have a bigger year than what he had. I was anticipating a new album, and I'm sure at some point he was too. That's what he was gearing up for. He put out, I think it's three or four uh, guest features, you know, for DJ Khaled, for Fat Joe, for Pusha T. And then he also had the, the spiritual single that he put out in June, but he didn't drop the album. So, Drug Dealers Anonymous, to me, is the best thing that we've heard from Jay-Z in a long time. I remember Pusha T was telling the story, talking about how he emailed Jay-Z, and Jay-Z emailed him back saying, you're about to take me to a dark place. And that's exactly where he goes. Jay-Z looks back on all his uh, drug dealing days, and I think it's a good reflection record. And Pusha T is no slouch either, but it's, it's hard when you're next to Jay-Z to not get out shine for the most part. The next few songs on my list are R&B songs, and they're on here because they remind me of situations from the past. Some that I've experienced, some that I've just seen, and we're starting that off with John Legend's Love Me Now. This is a case of where the single is better than anything on the album. Love Me Now was the first single from uh, Darkness and Light, and it's the song that I still play the most. I think that John Legend is uh, just an amazing singer and he's able to craft these songs that just they're just amazing that's all I can really say about it and so Love Me Now reminded me of like being in relationships not any one particular just being in relationships and thinking about how 
it might end, it might not, like, and how you're putting your all into it right then and there. So that's what that record reminded me of. The next one on my list is Black's Worst Luck. This is the breakup song. This is when you're like, okay, I just got broken up. Why do I have the worst luck with love? I love the slowness of the song. It's not one that has a flashy beat. It's mainly just black over uh, a very like uh, seldom production is how I can word that. And it's about him talking about how he's damaged. How, why would you want to be with me? And it's just black talking about having the worst luck with love. Maybe I'm not working enough, hurting enough. It's just one of those records for me that brought me into uh, a dark place, a little bit. The other record that is an R&B, and not necessarily the last record that's R&B on the list, but the one that I kind of grouped together is Usher's Tell Me. This is lust at its finest. Usher made a seven minute song and I was anticipating this to be two different kinds of records like one of those dual records I was like there's no way that Usher's going to have one continuous song for seven minutes that's just not something that he does often so I listened to Tell Me and lo and behold it was one song the entire time so I'm thinking this man is crazy I'm not gonna enjoy this at all come to find out and seven minutes into it, I'm still like, yo, this is crazy. The bridge that he has, when you're so wet and I'm so hard, the two become one. It's like, oh my God. It sounds very funny when you just read it out loud, but when Usher sings it, it's perfect. And then the hook. I've never heard Usher really hit the high notes like he does on Tell Me. I'm not saying that he hasn't, but... Tell Me is just one of those defining moments on an album that was largely forgettable for me. Hard to Love had a couple records, but Tell Me is easily the best. The next one on my list is Lloyd Banks' History. This one comes off of Halloween Havoc 3. And when I reviewed the album mixtape, um, I originally thought this was a song dedicated to the fans. Like it was a letter to the fans, but the more I listened to it, the more... I understood that it's less about the fans. Partly it is, but mostly it's about hip hop. It's a letter to hip hop. You no longer need what I'm bringing, that's what you're telling me. Like that is him talking to hip hop saying, I'm like one of the best, I'm doing all this, but you'd rather mess with these mumble rappers and all these one hit wonders. You don't care what I'm doing anymore. And again, it does kind of fit into the idea that it can be an open letter to the fans as well. If you're being honest, I don't think Banks has the same fan base that he did uh, 10 years ago, back in 2006. Those people were in it because he was hot at the time, but they're not in it for the long haul, like the loyal fans that still rush to listen to Lloyd Banks' music. Next on my list is Jeezy featuring Bankroll Fresh, All There. Another one of those songs that comes out before the album and outshines everything on the album. Bankroll Fresh was a huge fan of Jeezy's. Unfortunately, he didn't get to see this record come to fruition. Uh, DJ Folk was able to uh, get the vocals for the song and kind of chop it together. And you really had a collaboration that sounds like there was going to be some potential. I could see them working a lot together if Bankroll was still alive. And so Bankroll really shines on this record. I'm not going to pretend to be like that person that was up on Bankroll before he passed away and, you know, say all this other stuff. But I can say that he sounded great on this record. It was catchy. And the way that it's just blended together to where it's like Bankroll's rapping a couple parts and Jeezy comes in. It really does sound like they were in the studio together, even if they weren't. All right, we're about halfway through the list and we're going to kick... The second half off with some Mac Miller. This one is titled Planet Goddamn featuring Neomza. This record transported me back to like the late 90s. It sounds like a late 90s R&B uh, radio type of record. Neomza is just very talented and she sounds different than she's ever sounded. And I think that's a good thing. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's, uh, it's a good first impression, too, because a lot of people still are up on her. She's one of those artists that are still, uh, you know, on the rise. And I think 2017 could be big for her. But Planet Goddamn was just one of those records that Mac Miller did well on. 
it was one of my favorites from the Divine Feminine. What kind of list would I have if I didn't have some Travis Scott and some Kid Cudi? You put them together and you get through the late night. This song is just the, it's like the perfect example of what Kid Cudi should sound like now. Like, the album he dropped, Passion, Pain, and Demon Slayer was okay. It had a couple records on there. But I think Through the Late Night is just perfect. I have no idea much what Kid Cudi is saying in the verses, but his hook is just so perfect. Um, the humming that he does in the beginning, the hmm, 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 hmm. Like, the whole humming, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but that humming is just, it's beautiful. Kid Cudi is the perfect hummer. <laughs> so, Through the Late Night had to be on my list. It was the best uh, collaboration that we've seen from the two. Because we did get three this year. We got one on Passion, Pain, and Demon Slam, Baptized in Fire. And then we had the two on uh, Birds in the Trap. So, this one was my favorite. And I'm hoping that they continue to work. Because it seems like that... Travis Scott is bringing out the best in Kid Cudi. And it could have been a fluke, but I don't think so. I think that Travis Scott knows how to bring out the best in a lot of artists. You can just see all the guest features on Birds in the Trap. What kind of young Dolph fan would I be if I ignored the monumental year that he had? He put out several projects and he toured. He had hit records, would get paid. So I had to throw on some Young Dolph on this list. And my favorite has to be In My System featuring Boosie Badass. Um, I gotta say though, it's more for the Young Dolph verse. Boosie's verse isn't bad, but I think it's Young Dolph's verse that really kept me coming back to the song. Dolph said, when I was 12, I clocked in, I never clocked out. Like, that alone makes you get on the song. I think the whole verse is just perfect. The way he starts it off talking about how his mom and dad were on crack and they, you know, had sex and then Dolph was born. He And he used a nice metaphor. He's like, you scrape the bowl. You lean the pot, you scrape the bowl, and you get Dolph. Like, the, the, the last residue of the crack when you're making it. So... I thought that was very clever. I think it was just a stellar verse from Dolph. He was able to project a lot of different scenarios, pretty much like from birth up until now is kind of what I look at it like. He's, he talked about how he was born. He talked about how he was a hustling at 12 and now where he's at. Next on my list is Ray Streamer's Black Beatles featuring Gucci Mane. I was big on this record before it became a hit. Before the Mannequin Challenge and before it was number one on Billboard. I liked this record. I thought there was potential. Um, as someone who wasn't a Ray Streamer fan prior to Shrem Life 2, I was pleasantly surprised in the album. And so there are some cuts on there. It's hard to really pick one favorite. I had to go with Black Beatles, but I could have went with Look Alive. Um, there's one at the very end that I'm blanking on the, the song. Just Like Us. I like the melody on that. But Black Beatles is the one that I just kept coming back to. Lil Wayne may have not had the best year, but he did have one of the best verses that I've heard. And that is on Quality Street Music 2's intro. The one thing that you can say about Wayne is that he always laces drama with the best that he can do. And this record right here, it sounds like some vintage uh, 2008 Best Rapper Alive Wayne. This is easily one of the best verses that he's done in like five years. There's really no bad lines on here. It's more of him being descriptive and talking about how he was in prison and, you know, kind of reflecting on that time. I just love the song. Next on my list is No Malice's Jesus Christ. No Malice is an artist who is kind of finding his solo footing. I can't say that I was a big fan of his 2013 debut album, solo debut album at least. But I think with Jesus Christ, it gives me hope that he's able to find his stride. Because this song is pretty much like vintage clips. It's more reflective than anything. And I think that is important for No Malice. He doesn't want to make music that I think it's hard to like to understand because I think at sometimes he doesn't want to make anything 
doing that deals with the past but you can't really escape that and to kind of reinvent yourself is tough so I think he's finding his footing with Jesus Christ now let's take a trip to Chicago with Montana of 300s fighting demons dropping jewels fire in the church his highly anticipated debut album finally arrived back in May towards the end of May and this was an immediate standout it's five minutes of Montana just dropping some jewels. And he's also fighting demons, like the title says. It's like, uh, it's a perfect mixture of the two. He says, all men, every man dies, but not every man lives. And like, there's just a lot of food for thought on this record. And it was one that came up in conversation when I had started doing this list. And now we're going to take a trip to California, the West Coast with some Kendrick Lamar, Untitled O2. This song was the best on Untitled Unmastered to me because it's aggressive Kendrick. I like aggressive Kendrick. He is just going in. He's talking about you mess with top, you get killed. TDE, the mafia of the West. He just really showed a side that he hasn't shown for a while. Kendrick can be the best rapper out, but that's not his idea. That's not his goals. He doesn't want to do that. So Untitled O2 was just uh, a refresher for me and for a lot of people that, hey, Kendrick can still rap and he'll still go in. So don't tempt him. Now we're winding down to the final three. I had to at least put one Kanye song on this list. The Life of Pablo is not in my top 10 albums of 2016, nor will it be. I don't even know if it's in the top 20. But I can say that Real Friends was one of the best songs that Kanye's done in a long time. It was so honest, open. I like that it's based on a real life scenario. It just helps to add like the authenticity to it. Him talking about how his cousin stole a laptop and tried to blackmail him because there was a sex tape on it. Like that is, that just makes for, um, you know, song gold. It's one of those situations that you can turn into a record and you're going to get like raw emotion because I'm sure that had to make him so mad to see that his cousin would do that. And then like other situations where people were acting like friends but really weren't, you know, dealing with all the fakeness of the industry. So it was one of those records that Kanye really was able to excel at. Next on my list is The Weeknd's A Lonely Night. There's not too much of a reason why I put this on here. I just looked at Starboy's track listing and thought, which are the songs that I played the most? It was between A Lonely Night, Die For You, and Secrets. And so, realistically, interchange those three. You can put any of those on my list and they would fit. I think The Weeknd made a good album and those are the songs that I just enjoyed the most for melodies, for the, the production, for the fact that it gave me a bit of nostalgia referring to Die For You. So you can just throw those three, kind of lump them together I guess. The final song on my list is Kid Cudi's Goodbye. Unless you were really checking for Kid Cudi throughout the year, you might have missed this gem. This one didn't end up making the album, and I understand why. It has a sample from the movie Juice, and I think there's another sample in it as well. And as an artist, sometimes you don't want to compromise. I know it would kind of be hard to get stuff cleared. Again, I don't, actually, I don't really know the, the process behind sampling a movie. I think I would assume that you have to get it cleared. But if not, then I guess Kid Cudi just missed out on putting a good song on the list. This was strong from Kid Cudi because he was so focused. And he sounded like he was a little bit psychotic. Um, you know, like kind of like the earlier days, just going through it. There was a lot on his mind and he got it off his chest on this record. So, Goodbye had to make the list. So, those are 20 of my favorite songs of 2016. The video is way longer than I expected, but 
Let me know what you think about my list. Uh, tell me some of your favorite songs in the comment section below. Do you want me to do 20 more? Because I will. If you guys are into this video, into like the idea, I will do another 20. Um, if not, let me know what else you would like to see. And as far as like a year end 2016 list, I did my albums, I did songs. Uh, you know, what do you want to see next? Let me know in the comment section below. And then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video, follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain, and as always, thank you for your time, I appreciate you for watching, and until next time, peace.